I, um, I recently moved into the city and I, I grew up living out of the, in the country. The funny thing about Minnesota is, at least to me, is that you could be in the middle of a city of 50,000 people or more, but all you'd have to do is drive for 20 minutes and you'd be in the middle of a farm country. From an early age, my mom took me out to the garden and showed me how to plant vegetables by hand. When I got older, my dad showed me how to take care of the cattle or, or crops. I always had a place in my heart for farming, even though I knew that I'd never grow up to be a farmer. So after college, when I was able to buy a small house for myself, I made sure the backyard had enough room to plant a modest garden. I've since moved to the city because there's no room to plant gardens here. I live on the 15th floor of the apartment building, and when I look outside, I see pavement and streetlights and people wandering to or from work and bars. That's how I sleep now. About three months ago, I had been on the tail end of about 50 hour work week. My team had been working on a deadline and the fact that we were finally able to sunset the project was enough to make us want to celebrate. After a few many beers, a co-worker dropped me off at my house and I stumbled straight to bed. It was a scream that woke me up. You know when you're in that level of sleep, where you aren't sure what's going on? Like those times when your phone rings at 2 in the morning, but you for some reason can't recognize the sound of your own phone, so you keep trying to turn off your alarm. That's what that was. I heard the scream. In some part of my head I knew it was a scream, but it was so out of place that I couldn't process the information. So I just sat up in bed, looking into the darkened hall, wondering what had happened. I sat there in silence for about a minute before I laid back down. I just couldn't wrap my mind around the sound that I'd heard and my exhaustion overwhelmed me again. My head wasn't on the pillow for more than a few seconds before I heard the scream again. But this time it wasn't a scream exactly. It wasn't scared. It was angry. It was a shout. I lived in a quiet neighborhood, so that idea of hearing someone out in the street shouting didn't make any more sense than hearing a scream. I don't think I'm a coward, but it was hard for me to look out the window blinds. It took a few moments for my eyes to adjust to the shadows outside and the dim moonlight, but there was definitely something in my backyard. I could see the silhouette of something moving out there near the fence at the edge of my garden. I sat there looking out, thinking that maybe it was just some stupid kids pulling a prank. Like those idiots who were dressing up like clowns a while back. But then the hollering started again, and I could see whatever it was flailing around in the darkness. I could hear the sounds of limbs smacking against the wood of the fence. Again, I don't think I'm a coward, but I didn't get out of bed. I wasn't even sure if I wanted to call the police. I don't think that there has ever been a single time in my life where the idea of having to call the police has ever been an option. I just wanted whoever was outside to go away. The yelling and thumping went on for another full minute before finally going quiet. I looked out of my window again and part of me was hoping to see that the person was gone. Part of the other part of me was... Terrified, like it was a scene in a horror movie where the killer has his face or mask pressed up against the window. But when I looked outside, he was still there, just standing out in the darkness in that same place. It looked like he was just standing there staring at me. I can't pretend like I wasn't afraid. I mean, I know that by now, it's pretty obvious that I was afraid the whole time, but now, now, they're was just the, this guy, some psycho staring into my house, staring at me. I don't own a gun, so I grabbed a metal softball bat that I had for, I had say a while now, and went to the back door. I can't remember a time in my life when I had ever squeezed anything so hard. As if I were afraid, I'd drop the bat and be defenseless. I could feel my own pulse as my forearms went tight with the extortion, and I tried to calm myself. I took a breath, 
and then another. One last breath, and I opened the back door and saw the person, the man, still standing in that same spot, still staring at me from the darkness. Hey! I yelled. Get out of here! Yes, I'm well, I'm well aware of how pathetic that sounded. But I was still a little drunk, and it made me just paranoid enough that I started to think the guy could have been high and crazy enough to do something really crazy. I mean, those clown videos showed them standing around just looking at the camera, then suddenly rushing at them. Even if this was just a prank, it was... It was fucking messed up. Finally, I yelled, I I'm calling the cops! But still, the shadow didn't move. I could see enough of him to see that it was a person. It wasn't a trick of the light or anything. I could see a head sort of tilt to the side and the arms and legs. It sort of reminded me of the scarecrow my dad had when I was younger. Except I could see that there was no crossbar that would have been used to hold the arms up. The man's arms just dangled there. I was positive that I saw them twitch, and I worried he was going for a weapon. So I slammed the door and called the cops. The 911 operator told me that they had already received a call from the neighbors. Obviously, ones that had more sense than me, and police had been dispatched to my location. It wasn't more than 30 seconds later that I heard the sirens coming down the street. I rushed to the front of my house to see the flashing lights dancing around my darkened neighborhood. I wanted to do something dumb, like run out at the cops. I went to the back door again to see if a guy had, if that guy had run away. But when I got there, I could see that he was still there. And it definitely was a he. There was just enough light from the police cars driving up that I could see the wild-eyed glare of the man. His face looked all twisted and his eyes bulged out grotesquely. I could hear the police rushing around the side of the house and ordering the man down on the ground, but he didn't move. They warned him at th that they were armed, but still, he didn't move. I could just see the cop through the corner of the window, and he had one of those taser guns in his hand. He gave the guy one more warning before firing. I saw the jolt in the man's arms and legs as it hit him. His head snapped back too, but to my horror, he didn't fall down. He just stood there. Convulsing. Convulsingly. No, not standing. He wasn't standing. When the cop and his partner shone their light on the man, I saw the most horrible thing I possibly could have. I saw the scarecrow that was in my backyard. I talked with the police afterward, and it wasn't until the next day that they pieced things together. I'd taken off work to try and recover. Not only from drinking, but from what I saw. The man was a career criminal. And like I had worried about a meth head, he, he had just robbed the gas station a few blocks from my house and had been cutting through yards to get away, at least until he got to my house. Something you should know about my house, about my garden? The pot of dirt I'd used for the garden wasn't anything special. I didn't landscape it really, and I, I didn't really have a, any sort of nice fence or anything to keep out rabbits or any other animals. I just used some basic plastic tornado fencing to encircle everything. And to hold it into place, I, I used what was essentially four pieces of rebar and the previous owner of my house had left in the garage. So really, my yard was a fence, then a small plot of dirt with four, with four, four foot long pieces of rebar sticking out of the ground. God. The cops figured that he, when he jumped over my fence, he fell and must have slipped from the scuff marks they, that they found. And when he fell, he fell straight down onto one of the pieces of rebar. It skewered him straight through his ass. That yell I heard was him falling onto it. The hollering and flailing afterward must have been him coming out of shock of the moment it had been the back of his feet kicking while dangling in the air that I heard on my fence by the time I got to my back door his body weight had forced him to the side down the rebar as the metal slowly pierced through his body he 
he was probably dead when I first yelled at him. Maybe if I had done something sooner, he would still be alive instead of dying, impaled on my garden post, the pool of blood soaking into the dirt and the grass at the base of the post. Criminal or not, I can't stand to think of what happened to him. And that's why I live in the city now, where there are no scarecrows here. At all.